From the north side of the San Francisco Bay to Singapore, welcome to Urban X Real Talk Fitness Radio with your host, business owner, lecturer, author, master trainer, Tiaja, with over 30 years of experience in the health and fitness industry. He will challenge the fitness between your ears. So prepare your mind, body, and soul for the revolution of self-care, the evolution of fit, with real talk about real people, real health, real fitness, and the real deal behind our present illness culture. Real talk every time, all the time. Get weekly insights on how to shift your thinking, emoting, eating, training, hydrating, goal setting, and resting for you, the everyday athlete. You can cheat your fitness, but you can't steal your health flow. It's Tuesday, 9 a.m. Let's flow. Welcome to Urban X Real Talk Fitness Radio, where we challenge the fitness between your ears. I'm your host, Tiasha. Consider this. The Greenland shark can live for more than 400 years and appears to remain physically fit and fertile to the end. Or this. There's a jellyfish that swims in the Mediterranean and the seas around Japan whose individuals are capable of reverting back to the larval state and regrow to adulthood countless times. In a sense, it is biologically immortal. So too is the hydra, whose body is entirely composed of immortal stem cells and a whole new Hydra can be regenerated from any little piece that gets chopped off. Now these two creatures seem to possess the gift of eternal youth and vigor, and they never die of old age. The question of exactly how and why we age has titillated scientific minds for centuries, yet there is no agreement, let alone a useful answer. There are a myriad of competing theories, and we'll touch on most of them in succeeding weeks, but today I'd like to examine the one theory I think speaks to what most people likely believe, and that is our bodies have a sort of built-in obsolescence of tissues. The disposable soma theory portends that once you and I have passed our reproductive years, that nature no longer has much use for us. Some scientists even believe that aging is a disease itself. I suppose they would love to cure and at the very least create an anti-aging drug that you could take for the remainder of your years, which would slow down the rate of aging, particularly once you reach your critical obsolescence number. But is the bigger risk factor for arthritis, osteoporosis, health failure, stroke, diabetes, dementia, loss of hearing, or eyesight of waning energy, aging? I certainly don't think so, and I have fought against this kind of existential nihilism for nearly three decades. So why do our bodies degenerate over time? And secondly, is there anything we can do to slow down the rate of degeneration or essentially postpone it altogether? Given the changing demographic of the world populations where the number of people aged 65 and over worldwide is set to exceed those under the age of five for the first time in human history, The answer to this question may be the single most important one confronting us. Today will be just another day unless you decide it won't be. It is Tuesday, July 2nd, 2019. Let's flow. Today I'd like to try something a little bit dangerous. Before we start, there are a couple of things I need to disclose. What I'm about to show you can cause memory loss, poor vision, fatigue, arthritis, difficulty walking, and lasting psychological damage. Those over the age of 60, I'd recommend shielding your eyes. Younger members of the audience should be fine. The side effects won't kick in for a couple of decades. Okay, so, when you're ready, I'd like you to keep your eyes on the screen. Don't worry, uh, those of a sensitive nature can just look away now. Okay, we'll begin on the count of three. One, two, three. Pretty shocking, isn't it? Or, at this point, you're wondering why I'm showing you a birthday card. I'd like to tell you a story to explain why. It was 2007 in Jackson, Mississippi. A 27-year-old man, known as Mr. A, was suffering from depression, so he decided to enroll in a trial for a drug which might help. He was given a bottle of pills and told to take one every day. But... The days passed, and sadly, Mr. A didn't feel any better. In fact, 
at a particularly low point. He took the whole lot. That's 29 times the usual dose. Luckily, he immediately regretted his decision and he rushed to hospital. It looked pretty serious. His blood pressure had plummeted and he collapsed at reception. The on-duty doctor gave him intravenous fluids while he began a series of tests. But they couldn't find any trace of the drug in his system. After hours of monitoring, a doctor finally arrived with an explanation. Mr. A had been in the placebo group. In other words, he'd overdosed on 29 sugar pills. When he heard the news, Mr. A rapidly recovered. You've probably heard of the amazing healing powers of the placebo effect. Well, this is the opposite. This is the nocebo effect. It's the curse of negative expectations, which have the power to harm your health. In 2015, there were 900 million people over the age of 60. That's enough centenarians to populate Iceland. But governments warn us of rising pension bills and a rapidly aging workforce. Scientists tell of an inevitable decline into failing senses and medical interventions. Newspapers talk about aging as a time bomb, a disaster on the scale of the financial crisis. If you look it up in a dictionary, you'll find old is a synonym for worn out, hackneyed, and obsolete. As a society, we've turned aging into a threat. But have we got it all wrong? And could this negative view be undermining our health? I don't know about you, but in my experience at least, our expectations just don't stack up in reality. In the lab in Cambridge where I used to work, the room with its lights still on at 10 p.m. wasn't the office of a hard-working student, but an 84-year-old professor. Then there's my dad. Last year, he gave up his management job, threw away his reading glasses, and at 64 years old, he started a property renovation business. After a long career in a suit, most days he's covered in plaster or paint. Last week, he hacked a bathtub to pieces with a hammer. That's my dad. I'm only 27, but I just can't believe growing old is as bad as we think. So last year, I started doing some research. I found all kinds of surprising benefits, which I wrote up into an article for the BBC. So here's my whistle-stop tour of the upsides of ageing. I'm going to show you the happiness curve, a graph which shows how our happiness levels change over our lifetimes. As you can see, in general, we start out life pretty happy. From the age of 18, we become less content, eventually reaching midlife crisis point in our early 50s. But then, as we approach our late 60s, we become more satisfied with our lives again. In fact, by the time we're in our 60s, it's likely we'll never have been happier. <laughs> this U-shaped curve is no fluke. It's based on data from over 340,000 Americans. This is the immunity curve. The small peak shows what happens when the body first encounters the virus. It mounts a small immune response. The second peak shows what happens when the virus returns after years, even decades. This, in a nutshell, is immunity. And the older you are, the more viruses your body will remember. So those over the age of 50 catch half as many colds as the average 20-something. The final chart shows the results of the longest-running study into intelligence. And uh, you can probably guess it at this stage, um, by the time the participants reached their 40s, 50s, and 60s, they were better at nearly every skill tested than they were in their 20s. So, it looks like older really is wiser after all. Studies have shown that if you tell girls they're bad at maths, they'll be worse at maths. If you tell someone they're fat, they'll eat more. If you tell someone they're ill, they'll get sick. Aging is no different. Studies have shown that when older people are reminded of the stereotypes, 
suddenly they don't have such a good memory anymore. Being patronizing or speaking too slowly makes them less intelligent. These subconscious reactions can be triggered by something as innocent as a birthday card. Right, so I've shown you three graphs, uh, but I know I'm not going to overturn your preconceptions about aging just like that. Um, but I'm not done yet. Um, I'm going to tell you a story which I hope will help to convince you otherwise. In 1979, Ellen Langer was a young psychologist at Harvard University. She recruited a group of elderly men for a study and split them into two groups. Both groups were told they were going away for a week of reminiscence, and both groups were sent to stay in an old monastery just outside of Boston. But while the first group really would be reminiscing, the second group was doing something much more exciting. They were being sent back in time. The psychologist surrounded the men with props from the 1950s and asked her subjects to act like it was 1959. They watched old films, listened to old movies, and kept up with the news on vintage radios. They discussed Fidel Castro's march into Havana in the present tense and admired NASA's first ever satellite launch like it happened yesterday. They lived their lives like they were 20 years younger. There was no specialist equipment and no help. Nothing to remind the men they were anything but young and healthy. The impact was dramatic. When the men first arrived, they could barely carry their own suitcases. By the time they left, they were making their own meals, walking faster. As they boarded the bus to leave, they broke out into a spontaneous game of American football. Professor Langer's tests before and after the retreat showed their gait, arthritis, dexterity, memory, even vision improved in both groups, though the time travelers improved the most. A group of independent judges even said they looked younger. Many of the world's most influential thinkers, Angela Merkel, Ban Ki-moon, Warren Buffett, they're over the age of 60. This is an elite whose actions move the planet. And they're old. We need to grow out of our negative expectations. We need to move on from the idea that aging is a social burden. We need a new way to think about old age. So the next time you're hanging out with your grandparents or you find an older person's job application on your desk, I'd like you to think of this talk. Just remember, they could be smarter, happier, and healthier than you are. Changing the way you think won't just help those around you. It may just change the way you age yourself. At the very least, I hope you'll think twice about buying a tasteless birthday card again. Now here are my two cents and feel free to keep the change. We travel in a time machine every time we decide to reconnect with our past. Whether it's a painful memory or a photo or a favorite song, each and every cell in our bodies remember in fascinating detail every bump and bruise, every high and low we've experienced in life. It always amazes me how we think of growing older versus growing old. Remember when you used to look forward to growing older? How you couldn't wait to see that first chin hair as a guy or needing your first training bra as a girl? Back then, growing up was a associated with getting stronger and smarter and more financially stable. You couldn't wait for the day when you could gain your independence, move out and get your own place. So how did we go from anticipating growing up to being afraid of growing old? I'll tell you how. It's because in this society especially, growing up is something to be celebrated while growing old is something that is reviled and shunned. Over the next few weeks, I would like to shed some light on the new advances in geriatric science as well as many new theories on why we age. Our belief has and will forever be, aging is a natural process but growing old is a choice. That may sound like a trite and clever talking point to you at this present moment, but I can assure you that before this series is over, you will begin to rethink what you thought you knew about aging. Dear friends, I wish above all things that you prosper just as your soul prospers. You've been listening to Urban X Real Talk Fitness Radio with your host, Yasha. Until next week, as always, walk in health and peace.